We realize that since you've last met, the impact will answer the call of death, but God's been good to us. Allow us to stay on the side of life just a little while longer. And we realize and we recognize that God didn't have to do it. We sure thankful that God did. And this is another expression of the goodness and the graciousness and the loving kindness of God that have been extended to each and every one of us that we're still on this time side of eternity. We're grateful tonight to have those who are with us. As always, I mentioned going to have some pounds with us. And, and I appreciate Brother Perry Johnson so much and the brother who worked along with him here at 29th Street for the invite to come and share with you my faith in Jesus Christ. And I want to say this to those who are visiting with us tonight. You're not members of the Church of Christ. You are indeed our honored guests. And we recognize that there are places, many other places we could have gone tonight. Uh, but because you decided to come by here, uh, we want you to know that we are indeed grateful. Uh, our, our hope, our, our plan, and, and our plea uh, is to tell you the truth and treat you uh, very well. Because you're among friends here in the family of God. And so we're grateful for you. We hope that you are able to follow along with us. And we hope that you brought a Bible because in the Church of Christ, we're a Bible-believing church. Uh, we speak where the Bible speaks. And then we're silent where the Bible is silent. And when you come to the Church of Christ, you know that there's some things that we do differently. Uh, we, don't, we don't have instrumental music. That's because it's not authorized by the Lord for New Testament worship. We don't have choirs to sing because it's not authorized by New Testament worship. Uh, the Bible commands that everybody, everybody is to sing. And in the Church of Christ, you notice that preachers are not called reverend. Uh, because you only read that one time in your Bible. And the Bible says, Psalm 111, verse number 9, He sent redemption unto His people. He commanded His covenant forever. Holy and reverent is His name. And so the Bible tells us that that was referring to God Himself. Because we know that because He has a people. And in order to, uh, my friend, to qualify Psalm 111, you have to have a people. And then the Bible said, not only must you have a people, but you got to be able to redeem them. And then, not only that, the Bible says you got to be able to have a covenant that can last forever. Now, in order to have a covenant to last forever, you have to live as long as the covenant exists. And since no man can live forever, therefore, that verse does not qualify. Uh, no man qualifies in that verse. That verse refers to him who was from everlasting to everlasting. Yeah. And the only one qualifies is God himself. Amen. And we mentioned the other night that reverend means awesome. The only one I know is awesome is God Almighty. Amen. Come with me now. We get our, begin our study together tonight of God's word because I want those individuals who are with us and maybe not a um, member of the body of Christ that you have an opportunity even tonight uh, before this meeting comes to a conclusion that you have um, you make, make up your mind to say yes to Jesus Christ. God has been good to all of us. Yes, and it's time for us to be good to him. Yes. And we're good to him when we obey him. Yes. Because Jesus says, if you love me, yes. that, that, that if it is small, but it's big. Yes. It's small, word, but it has big connotations to it. Yes. If means on condition. Yes. If you truly say you love me, then you will keep. You will keep my commandments. Look at the Bible. We're in Psalms tonight. Psalm 85 and the verse is number 6. Psalm 85 and verse number 6. Here in this psalm, the Bible says as God's people was waiting for God to forgive them and because of their iniquity, God had uh, in essence, uh, sin had cut them off from God. And the psalmist writes in Psalm 85, verse 6, he said, Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? I want to talk about that tonight. Revive us again. This lesson is not only for those who are uh, members of the body of Christ, but also for those who are not members of the body of Christ. We need to be revived. Amen. I was meant to say that before I got started, good uncle is the way good to have Brother Calvin up there. I appreciate him so much. 
Um, and what he does here is he travels around. I appreciate that brother. That brother has blessed lives. I appreciate the ministry that you're doing. I really delve in it. And I was all the way in California. And the young lady came up to me and she said that um, she told me she said that she was a member of the church. I mean, she said, because I saw you on YouTube. She told me which one. I said, oh, that's all is the way. Yeah. Yeah. I said, that brother, that brother, I'll tell you, folks, added to his account. The Lord is adding to his account because of the ministry that he does. So God bless you, my brother. Appreciate you for what you've done, for what you're doing and what you've done. Revive us again. Now, now the word revive, it literally means to bring back to life again. It is the idea that uh, man needs resuscitation. Uh, it's the idea that uh, we are dead because of sin. Now you got to understand this. Now everybody tonight, everybody that's here tonight, you got to understand this. In God's eyesight, either you're in one or two places. Either you are in Christ or you are dead in your sins. Now I need you to understand that. And now, and I'm going to get there in just a moment. All right, but, but the church, the church also needs to be revived. Uh, the church of Christ needs um, to wake up. We need to come out of our, our deadness and we need to be about the business of Jesus Christ. It is high time for the church to make up her mind and to say it is time for us to do what God has called us to do. And so I want to revive us from that standpoint, but also in this, uh, this lesson, trying to help uh, some individuals in regards to what they need to do to be revived. Now, either you're in Christ or let's see what the Bible says. Come with me, brothers. In Ephesians chapter 2, I'll start there. In Ephesians chapter 2, and let's look at verse, at verse number 1. In Ephesians chapter 2, in verse number 1, listen to what Paul says. And you have ye quickened. Now, now Paul says to the saints down in Ephesus, and you have the word quicken, it means to make alive. And it was to bring back from the dead. So he said, Paul said, now you had he quickened. You were dead in trespasses and sins. Because you were dead in trespasses and sin. Where in time so past. Where in time past. You wrote. Now look what it says. You were dead in trespasses and sin. And then it says, you walk according to the course of this world. According to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power. According to the air. prince of the power of the devil. Prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now the works. The spirit that now works. In the children of disobedience. Of disobedience among whom also. Among whom also. So we all. Had our conversation. We all had our lifestyle in time back. In the lust of our flesh. In the lust of our flesh. In the lust of our flesh. Which means there was a change of what God happened. And I'm saying to everybody tonight, if you're not a Christian, you need a but God experience. You, you need a but God experience in your life. And so therefore, uh, we're going to look at this because uh, my point is simply this. Either you're in Christ or you are still in the world. And when you're in the world, it's because you are still in your sins. Now, and that's a terrible place to be. Let me just give you a picture of how bad that is. Ephesians chapter 2, drop down to verse number 11. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 11. Listen to what Paul says. Wherefore, remember, Wherefore, remember that, that ye being in time past, you being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh. Now don't miss this now. You were in the flesh. In the flesh. Come on. Who are called uncircumcision. You were called uncircumcision. By that which is called the circumcision in the flesh. Come on and read. Made by him. You, you would look down at one of the Jews. We're going to read. The Bible says that at that time, when you were in your sins, at that time, you were without Christ. You see, when you don't come to Jesus Christ, the Bible said not only are you in your sin, but the Bible said you are without Christ. Not only are you without Christ, we're going to read, sir. Being aliens you are the covenant of Israel. From the covenant, aliens from the covenant of Israel, all right, and strangers, strangers from, from the, the covenant, covenant of promise, have been and without God, and without God in the world. And this is what the Bible says. When you don't give your life to Jesus, the Bible tells us that you are in a situation 
where you are in your sins, in the flesh, you're without God, no hope, and the Bible says you are in the world. And so my friend, that's a bad place to be tonight. Because what sin does, sin separates us from God. And Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Behold, the arm of the Lord is not shortened, that he cannot say. His ear is not heavy, that he cannot hear. But your sin and your iniquity have separated between you and God. And the Bible says, and he will not hear. The Bible didn't say there's something wrong with God. The Bible didn't say God could not hear. The Bible didn't say God can't hear. There's nothing wrong with God hearing. But the problem is sin separates us from God. Now, what do we need to do to be revived? If you are in sin, because what happens, you are dead. You got to understand this. When, when you're in your sins, you're dead. Now, the problem is simply this. The Bible says, Romans 3, 23, all have sinned. And because all have sinned, the Bible says, we are midgets. The Bible says, all have sinned, and we are midgets. Because the Bible says, all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. Not only are we short from the standpoint when we measure up to God, but my friend, we fall short. It, that's like trying to jump from here to the front door. I don't care how hard I, I try to get there, uh, Brother Perry, I'm going to come up short. And that's the same concept when it comes down to God. All of us come up short when it comes down to where we need to be. And the reason we come up short is because of the fact of our sins. And so what I'm going to try to help you to do tonight, I'm going to try to help you to understand what you need to do to come out of sin. Now the same thing that the sinner needs to do to come out of their sin is what church folk ought to be doing to try to help them to get out of their sins. Alright, with that in mind, let's go. I love to use Old Testament examples because I like to, I like for folk to see what I'm saying. Uh, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Go to the book of Ezekiel. I want you to see this tonight. In the book of Ezekiel, uh, meet me if you don't mind at verse Verse number one, Ezekiel chapter 37, and verse number, verse number one. I want you to watch what the Bible says. Ezekiel 37, and verse uh, number, number one. Listen to what the Bible says. The hand of the Lord was upon me. All right, now here we have Ezekiel. Around this time, it is, Ezekiel has been in Babylonian captivity for five years. He went there in 598 B.C., but now at the writing of Ezekiel, it's five years later. So it's 593 B.C. Here he was, a priest from Zadok, Z-A-D-O-K. Um, here he was, and he received most of his messages in visions. Now, in this vision, in 593, he begins to write, because the Lord shows him a vision, and he begins to write in regards to talking about God's people yes. and how God's people can be brought to life. And the Bible says in Ezekiel 37 and verse number 1, listen to what the Bible says. The hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. He carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Now he says, I, I was taken in his vision to a valley. And, and when I went to this valley, the first thing I noticed was dead. I know it's dead. Because wherever there's bones, it represents death. Whenever you see bones, something had to die. He sees a valley that's full of death. When we look at our world, it's the same thing that we see today. There is death everywhere. Because man is separated from God. Death is that Greek word we understand, Thanatos, T-H-A-N-A-T-O-S, T-H-A-N-A-T-O-S, Thanatos, which means separation. Now I'm talking about that more on the Lord's tomorrow night. He says, number one, I see death. Follow me now, this is the picture of how we are separated from God. Death was everywhere. And the book said, not only do I see death, but there's something else I see. In verse number two, and caused me to pass by them round about. And, and he says, and, and I got an aerial view as I went around the valley to get a good look as the what was going on. And as I uh, surveyed the land, watch what he says. And behold, yes. there were very many in the open valley. I saw 
So many. Yeah. And they were church. The Bible said they were in an open battle. Yeah. I wish help us to understand that a battle had taken place. Yeah. And these individuals had been killed on the battlefield. He said, as I survey, uh -huh. I see number one, I see death. But then, number two, I see something else. Look, keep reading, sir. And lo, yes. they were very dry. He said, I see all these bones in an open field. Yeah. He said, I see number two, not only do I see death, but I see devastation. Yeah. I see devastation yeah. as I look at these dry bones. Drop down to verse number 11, because I see something else. He said in verse number 11, not only do I see death, but watch what he said. In verse number 11, watch what the Bible said. Because the bones are going to start talking. The bones are going to start talking. And verse 11, the Bible says, Then he said unto me, Then he said unto me, Son of man, Son of man, These bones are the whole house of Israel. These bones represent the whole house of Israel. Come to me, sir. Behold, behold, they say, Watch the bones start talking. Our bones are dry. The bones, which means, church, not only are they bones, but they've been out there so long. They're dried up bones. And the bones say, come on and read. And our hope is lost. Watch this now. Not only is there death, number two, not only is there devastation, but number three, there is defeat. They say our bones are very we are cut off from our part. We are separated. In other words, when you're in the world, not only is there a death in the world, not only is there devastation, but the bones say we are so defeated that we are dry and we can't get ourselves together. That's a picture of a person that is living their life outside of Jesus. Christ. Amen. Devastation. Death. And defeat. And we can't get our sins together. We're cut off from our parts. We can't get together. That's why folk in the world, you can try to live as best you can. But you will never please God, my friend, by yourself. You need some heavenly help tonight. And so therefore, let's talk about this, how, how we're going to revive dead humanity. Look at our world. Death is everywhere. Yes. Young folk doing things separated from God. Young folk killing. You know, we're in a sad state when children kill their parents. Yes. We're in a sad world when parents kill their children. Yes. Because we're showing the church there is death everywhere. Homosexuality, we've been talking about that since Sunday, is, is running down the street like a mad dog. And then when you say something about it, all of a sudden people began to label you. Yeah. But we don't hate anybody in the church of Christ. We love everybody. But you got to tell folk the truth. Amen. Think about it. If, listen, just think, I'll just use a little common sense. I don't want to use a little common sense. Because if all the men got together, I'm not going to be with you, y'all by yourself. But I'm just using the point. If all the men got together, and then if all the women decided to hook up together, do you realize that after this generation, everybody would die off? We would just die off. Why is that? Because we are not doing what God told us to do. Why did God give Adam Eve? Because she was his help me. In other words, she was his suitable helper to do for him what he couldn't do for himself. Because when you go back and read the Bible, the Bible said when God put man on the earth, one of the responsibilities was to go multiply and replenish or repeople the earth. And I don't care. You can put two men together all day. Well, that's just nasty. Two mustaches coming together. That's just nasty. But I start about to tell you, two men together will never be able to repopulate. And so therefore, that is outside of the real of it. I said, darkness is everywhere. It is everywhere. So, and what God is trying to help us um, to understand tonight, and I want us to see this, because there is a way for humanity to come back to life again. Because see, God made us. But then he lost us to sin. But God is so awesome. He wants to revive us and put us back in a right relationship.
relationship with him. But how is this going to happen? Well, let's go back. We're, we're um, Ezekiel 37, and we're going to uh, look at verse, uh, and then look at this before I go back there, you know, in regards to the church, look at we're in verse number 3. We're going to read in verse number 3. Before we get there, I want to make sure the church understands that we have a part to play. If humanity is going to be revived, if, if humanity is going to be brought to God, members of the church of Christ, there is something we must understand that we must be doing. Amen. Now, these bones are dry. Now, God has the power to raise these bones. That's right. But God uses human instruments yeah. by which to get these bones yeah. to come to life. Because in verse number 3, watch what God tells him to do. In verse number 3, the Bible says, And he said unto me, And he said unto me, Son of man, Son of man, Can these bones live? He watches this now. He asks him, he says, I want to know, Can lost humanity, Can they live? Got question 29th Street. The citizens of Tampa who don't know Jesus, Can they be saved? And the Bible said, Watch the book, go and read and I answered. And I answered. Oh Lord God. Oh Lord God. Thou know. Lord, you know. You hold the answer. Right. You see, God doesn't ask questions because he doesn't know. Right. Whenever God asks a question, it's not for God to gain information. Right. But he asks questions so that we right. might understand where we are. Yeah, y'all remember when God came. Uh, the Bible said that the God, I uh, put man in the garden with Eve and, and when God came, and, and God is so awesome. The Bible said the voice of God came walking in the cool of the day. Now you know you gotta be awesome when you got a voice that can walk. I said, you know God is awesome. The Bible said God voice came. Go back and read Genesis for yourself. The Bible said voice came walking. And then came in the cool of the day. God just cool like that. He, he got it going on like that. And, and the book says, he asked now when God asked the question, it wasn't for him, uh, because he lost a uh, man, he forgot where he put him. It wasn't for him, but it was for Adam right. to look at where his relationship was with God. Right. And, and so when God asked the question, mm -hmm. it's for man to have an understanding, to consider where are you when it comes down to a relationship with God. Amen. And so he said, he asked the question, he said, son of man, can these, can these bones live? Come on, read, sir. And again he said, and then he said, come on the side upon these bones. Watch. He says, in order for these bones to live, I need somebody yes. Yes. to preach to these bones. Yes. Somebody yes. need to take the word Amen. to these bones. Yes. Look around, we work with folk. Right. We ain't nothing but bones. Yes. We, 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 we have family. Nothing but bone. Dead human. They walk around because the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse number 6 that the woman that lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. Amen. She's walking around, but she's dead. Yes. What do you mean? You can be walking around physically alive, but spiritually, yes. spiritually dead. Yes. And so the Bible says uh, to us uh, tonight that he said, prophesy. Give them a word. And if humanity is going uh, to be able uh, to come to life and to live spiritually, somebody need to come with the word. Amen. Listen to Paul. Listen to Paul. Let's go to Romans chapter 10 quickly. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 14. Romans 10 and verse number 14. Let's watch what uh, the Bible said. Romans chapter 10 and verse uh, number 14. How then, How then shall they call on him? Watch this now. How, and I'm not going to come back there. How shall they call the Lord in whom they have not believed. In whom they have not believed. And how should they believe in him? And how should they believe in the Lord? Of whom they have not heard. Of whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear? And how shall they hear? Without a preacher. Unless somebody is coming and bringing the word. Somebody got to tell humanity what they need to do in order to be saved. Now my friend, you got to understand this now. You can't save yourself. Doesn't matter how good you are, you can't save yourself. And see, one of the problems in religious world is you have religious teachers are trying to tell people in essence you can save yourself. Yeah, yeah they tell you you can save yourself. But what do you mean? They try to tell you that there's something you can do uh, from the standpoint, or uh, there's some effort on your part in regards to you earning your salvation. 
For my friend, I need you to understand, there's none of us can ever earn salvation. Amen. Salvation is a gift. Yes. The Bible said in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23, the Bible said, for the wages of sin is death. But then the Bible said, but the gift of God is eternal life. In other words, if eternal life is a gift, number one, that has to be, whenever there's a gift, it denotes three things. Whenever you see gift, doron, doron, that's the Greek word for, for gift, doron. Uh, whenever you see that, uh, delta, omicron, rho, omicron, uh, omega, yeah, do, wrong, uh, do, wrong, do, delta, omicron, rho, I'm sorry, uh, pi, omicron, omega, that's it, that's it, y'all know what I'm talking about, but I ain't hit myself with that. Do, wrong, do, wrong, that's, uh, that, that do, do, wrong is a gift. Whenever there's a gift, it denotes three things. Number one, there has to be a giver. Number two, there has to be a receiver. And number three, there has to be something that is given. Whenever there's a gift. Now, what is given is eternal life. God gives eternal life. So God is the giver. But you and I are the receiver. But in order to receive the gift, we have to do what God says, just like God said. Because to have a giver and no receiver is a shame. Well, why do you say that, Brother Miles? Because this gift, God wants to give it to everybody. Yeah. Look at your Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 3. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 3. This is a gift that God wants to give to everybody. How do you know that? Because I know what the Bible says. Watch what the book says. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. Yes. I'll say it. I'll say it. Who have all men to be saved. God wants everybody to be saved. And to come unto the knowledge and of the truth. You see, God wants you, what do you mean by be saved? So listen, if you are not a member of the Lord's church, that God wants you to be saved. Amen. God wants to give you this gift. Yes. He wants you to have this gift. He wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. But you can't be saved without the knowledge of the truth. Amen. And see, that's where the church of Christ members come in at. We got to tell folk, give folk the knowledge of the truth. We got to go and tell people the truth. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9. 2 Peter 3 and verse number 9. Watch what the Bible says. That the Lord, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Concerning his promise. so men come slack. Yes, in other words, the Lord ain't like us. That's right. You see, a man will promise you the world. I said, man will promise you the world. And when he have a nickel in his pocket. See, God is not like us. See, the Bible says, God is not slack as some men. You see, because you got to understand this. Uh, sisters, you got to understand this about a man. Uh, the makeup of a man is very interesting. Mm. Oh, oh, my goodness. I said the makeup of a man is very interesting. Because you got to understand some things about a man. There's, there's some things you got to understand. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to you, you got to understand some things. You see, sisters, a man doesn't appreciate anything he doesn't work for. All right. All right. Sorry. Uh -huh. That's a beautiful oil painting. Uh -huh. 
And, and because he, it's beautiful to look at, but he also recognizes, guess what? I can afford her. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, she's in my, she's in my reign. So therefore, guess what? I try to talk to her. That she's out of sight. But then there's another pain. It's finger pain. Finger pain is just giving you something to do, but you don't take it home. And when that girl will think that man ain't gonna be with you, you out of your mind. So the first couple of seconds, either he already says, either you out of reach, you out of sight, or you out of your mind. All right, all right, that's just that's too much, that's too much, that's too much. It is interesting, since I'm here, since I'm here. All women want the same thing. It's interesting, it doesn't matter where a woman is, all women want the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you're dating, if you're married, I'm trying to, I'm ahead of you now. Say, Brother you don't know me, I, I don't have to know you. I'm going to tell you, I know, I, I, what I'm getting ready to say, you're going to agree. You may not agree right now, but you're going to agree when I say what I'm getting ready to say. All women want the same thing. Me, you got to understand this. All women want to be number one. Yeah. And when she's number one, she don't want you to compare her to her mama. She don't want you to compare her to your mama. Don't sit there and sit there and sit there and talk about the fact you don't cook like my mama because if you enjoy your mama cooking that much, you should have stayed home with your mama. And all men, we want the same thing. We want the remote control. Help us up out. Beside every great man is a great woman. Behind every good man is a good woman. And behind every sorry man is his mama. Are you wrong? But it all should come but God wants everybody to come to repent. Repent means to turn. It means to change. And that's how God can revive us tonight. We got to turn, make a change toward Him. Now you got to be careful. You got to remember this. The thing that we need tonight is the Word of God. Amen. You got to be careful because there's so many people teaching so many different things. Because I know you turn on the television. Let me just deal with this, and I'll just deal with this, and I'll move on. But one of the things that people will tell you, if you want to be saved, only thing you have to do is just say the sinner's prayer, and you can be saved. And when I come by here to tell you, my friend, I want you to understand, according to the Word of God, what I'm bringing you tonight is the Word of God. Because according to the Word of God, number one, my friend, the sinner's prayer is not in your life. Nobody has ever been saved by saying a sinner's prayer. Well, I know there's a John chapter 9 and verse number 31. Try not to be too long tonight. John 9 and verse number 31. Very familiar scripture to us. Those of us members of the body of Christ. John 9, verse number 31. Watch what the Bible says. Now we know that God hear about sin. Now, now the Bible says, for we know that God does not hear a sinner. But if any man be a worshiper of God. Watch this now. We know that God does not hear a sinner. So therefore, of course, if you're outside the family of God, if you have not been saved, there's no need for you to pray. Right. Because the Bible says, God, hear it not sinners, but a man be a worship of God. And do his Watch will. this now. Why won't God hear him? Because they're not doing his will. And doing his will, yeah, he hear it. if you want God to hear your prayer, you must be doing God's will. Now, I'm going to look at that text real fast. Let me just um, just introduce something to you real fast. And that's called hermeneutics. Grandma said herman who? Well, hermeneutics. Herman, hermeneutics is a science of how we interpret the Bible. How we come to an understanding of God's word. Now, we've been reading that text all of our life. John 9, 31. But, but we know that God here is not. We've been reading that all of our life. But let me just, now we need to examine it. Let's, let's put that under our spiritual microscopes. Because in order to understand the Bible and this particular passage, and Bible hermeneutics, we've got to understand a couple of things. Let me just put this in layman's term. You have to know, number one, who's talking. Right. Number two, you have to know who's he talking to. Right. Number three, you have to know what are they talking about. And then number four, under what dispensation are they talking under? 
You have to say those four things. Now, first of all, let's go back and look at this text. Because the who's talking in verse 31 is a young man. A young man is talking. Who is he talking to? He's talking to some Pharisee who were Jews, fellow Jews, just like he was. Yeah. Now, they, they are talking, they are under the Mosaic dispensation, yeah. and they are talking about a man named Jesus Christ. Yeah. When you go back to John 9, verse 1, you will see what has transpired. He was a young man who was born blind. And when he was born blind, the disciples, when they encountered the young man, they said to Jesus, we want to know who sinned. Yeah. This man or his parents yeah. that he was born blind. Yeah. Because he, they had the same problem that we have sometimes. Right. Yeah. We think that whenever something bad happened to somebody, that God is punishing them yeah. because of sin. But I come by here to tell you, all of us are going to go through some troubles. All of us have problems. Problems, and we talk about those four storms. We are talking about those four storms. And so hopefully we will understand that. We'll keep that in mind. But my friend, if you understand, problems are a way of life. Right. Just keep living. And you won't have problems. Okay. And I told you that you don't have to trouble trouble for troubles to trouble you. Just keep living and troubles are going to come. You got to bother nobody for troubles to come. Right. You can move all by yourself. Don't even leave a forward and get dressed. And troubles will still find you. Because troubles are a part of life. Think about this, as soon as you stop having troubles, you check out of here. <laughs> you show me a person with no trouble, they've already checked out. Yeah, because all of us are going to have some troubles. If you're married, you're going to have trouble. Yeah. If you're not married, you're going to have trouble. Yeah. If you don't have children, you're going to have trouble. If you have, Lord have mercy, you're going to have trouble. <laughs> yeah, if you got in-laws, yeah. troubles. Trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. <laughs> Somebody. But everybody has troubles. You're going to have. You're going to have troubles. Now, and so Jesus had to help the boys understand something. He said, this was not. Neither one. He said, but this is for God. In essence, for God to get the glory. God is going to go to work on this young man. Then Jesus. Dr. Jesus. Never went to medical school. Dr. Jesus. Never took a class in ophthalmology. Dr. Jesus just spit on the ground, stirred up the spill, put it on the boy's eyes, told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam, and a boy that was born blind came back seeing. When he came back seeing, the word got to the Pharisees in regard to what had transpired. And the Bible said they began to talk, eventually they talked to the boy's parents, and they began to say, hey, is this your son? Is it yes, that's our son. And he said, what happened to him? He said, we really, we really don't know in regards to what transpired. And the Bible said, but they feared they might be kicked out of the synagogue. So they were careful as to what they said. And then the parents said, you know, this boy is of age. Go talk to him yourself. And so they went and talked to the boy that Jesus had just healed of his blindness in regards to what had transpired. They made a huge mistake. They said that Jesus was a sinner. And that young man said to those Pharisees, he said, whether he's a sinner or not, but let me tell you what I do know. One thing I know I once was black, but now I see. And the Bible said, the young man said, for all we know, we Jews, we Jews, there's something we Jews know. What do the Jews know? We know, Jews, we know that God will not hear a sinner. But the question becomes tonight, how did the Jews know that God will not hear a sinner? Well, you got to understand this. The only thing the Jews had back then was the Old Testament. And the Old Testament told them that God will not hear a sinner. Yeah. Let's go to the Bible, brothers, and what they had back then. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse number 29. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse number 29. Watch what the Bible says. And then we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 28 and verse number 9. Then I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse number 15. Then I'm going to go to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 12. But first of all, let's go to Proverbs 15 and verse number 29. The Lord is far from the wicked. Now watch this now. Now church, when the Bible says wicked, I wish we understand this. When you read the Old Testament and the Bible mentions the word wicked, it's not talking about the child abuser. 
It's not talking about the, just, just the, the, the murderers, the, just the child abusers, uh, the rapists. It's not talking about just um, the thieves and, 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 and those kind of folk, adulterers. It's not talking about saying wicked. Understand this. That's anybody that's not in a right relationship with God. Because in the Bible, you are classified either as righteous or you are classified as wicked. If you are not in a right relationship with God, you are considered wicked. All right, let's read that again. Watch the Lord is far from the wicked. You see the Bible says? If you don't have a relationship with him, the Bible says the Lord is far from the wicked. But he hears the prayer of the righteous. But God only hears the prayers of the righteous. So if you're not in a right relationship with him, God is not going to hear your prayer. Amen. And that's a dangerous thing tonight. Yes. Can you imagine going through this life Amen. and not being able to pray to God? I mean the stuff you have to deal with. Yes. Because it's a rough world, y'all. Yes. Because it's a rough world. I remember when I was in Rockford, Illinois, um, for the pair, I was in my car, minding my business. Uh -huh. Came up to a stoplight, light turned red, and I was there, and I was listening to a song that came on, and I enjoyed that song. It was a gospel song, and I was enjoying that song from the pair in. And I was enjoying it too much, I guess, but the light changed. Uh -huh. But I was so caught up in it, just thinking that song reminded me how good God had been. And I was just sitting there in my car, minding my business, praising my God. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. But the car behind me, evidently, they didn't they want to listen to the same station. <laughs> yeah, so they started blowing their horn and, and everything. And I go, oh, excuse me, so I went and the person came around me real fast and, and they weren't happy at all. And they held up one finger, and, amen. And, and I began to think, I said, you know what, they right. My God is number one. Help me somebody. And the Bible says the Lord is far from the wicked. If you don't have a relationship with him, why he's far from the wicked. But the Bible says he hears the prayers. And those who are in a relationship with him, he will hear your prayer. You have to be righteous tonight. That means you need to be in a right standing with God tonight. In Proverbs 28 and verse number 9. He that turned away his ear from hearing the Lord. Watch If you won't obey God. He that turns his, his ear from hearing God's law, even his prayer, no need to pray. The Bible says, even see, God says, I look at your prayer as an abomination. When you try to pray to me and you're not in a relationship with me, God says, I look at that prayer as an abomination. When will God hear? Isaiah 115. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 15. When will God hear? I want to know tonight, when will God hear your prayer? When will God hear your prayer? God told Israel a long time ago in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 15. This is the Bible. And when you stand forth your hand, God says, spread forth your hands. God says, you spread forth your hand. I will hide my eyes from you. God says, I'm not going to hear you. Yea, when you make many prayers, when you pray to me, I will not hear. I'm not going to hear you. Your hands are full of blood. The deeds you've done. Right. Full of blood. Come on. Wash you. God says, you need to be washed. Make you clean. God said you need to be washed. And I'm saying to those who are here tonight, if you want to be in a right relationship with God, you have to be washed. God said, wash you, make you clean. Come on. Put away the evil of Put away the evil of your eyes. Put away my eyes. Cease to do evil. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Relieve the Judge the fatherless. Judge the father. Plead for the widow. Plead for the widow. Come now. When should they come, Brother Barry? Come now. church when God says come now and then God said let us reason together say the Lord what translation says come now and consider your options yeah, 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 yeah. what are your options tonight either you're in Christ either you're in Christ where you're righteous and you're in the right relationship with God or you're in the world you are hopeless, yeah. and you're cut off from God. Amen. Now, God is so good, he allows you an opportunity. Yes. Yes. Every day you live, yes. 
God allows you an opportunity Amen. to get right with him. There will be no excuse at the judgment. Because God's regard is good to everybody. Yes, sir. As I was driving over tonight, and, and we went through those toll booths to make it over here to Tampa, you know, I noticed it was raining. It wasn't raining just on my car. It was raining on everybody's car. Yes, God allows it to rain on the just. Yes, and so God is good to everybody. Yes, Think about that. Every, God, those who are alive, God will call of us up. Yes, he didn't just wake up just his children. Amen. Think about that. People, individuals who are in jail and they're supposed to be in jail, God worked them up. The folk the police looking for, God worked them up. Are you with me? God worked them up. God is good. God is good to everybody. He's good. God is just good. He's a good God that we serve. And the Bible says to us that, that, that God says, Why come now and let us reason together, together and say the Lord. That though your sins be as scarlet. You see the word scarlet, that means double dip. That scarlet, what they would do with scarlet, uh, Brother Perry, that they would double dip it. Yeah. They just dip it one time. It, it, was, it, was, it was double dip. Because some of us, yeah, we would have been double dip. Ooh, because we were in, we in the world, we were something else. I mean, we were in the world, we, we, I mean, we, we partied, y'all. I mean, we, we did it back in the day. I know I hit fathers now, but back in the day, oh, back in the year, when Arthur and Ruby were fathers, and, them, and yeah, them knees were fathers, there was a time. But we get on that dance floor, we did. And, and amen, somebody. Yeah, yeah, amen. I mean, we, we drink communion now, there was a time. Yeah, we had something much stronger than communion. Help me, somebody. Yeah, but I say, thank God, He redeemed us. And brought us back again. Yeah, now I dress them much longer than they used to be. They were, yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, amen, amen. It's not as tight as they used to be. God had to bring us a mighty long way. Some of these men used to wear some tight stuff. Help me, somebody. Yeah, stuff was so tight, put a nickel in their pocket, you could almost read the thing. Let me stop. But I'm saying, God has been good to us. It brought us a mighty long way. And if God has been that good, good to me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I can't talk to everybody. But I know God's been good to me. Every day I wake up, I think about the fact that justice wanted to cut me down. I say, every day, you got to think about this, you were unconscious. Justice wanted to cut you down. And think about this, every, every day I get up, justice is standing over me. Wanted to cut me down. But God dispenses his grace. And grace has a talk with justice. And they're talking about whether I should see another day. And whenever Grace is having a talk with justice and they're discussing whether or not I should live to see another day, I'm glad that mercy walked in my room and woke me up this morning and said, Pals, get up from there. God has granted you one more day. That's why I wake up in the morning. I wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I thank you for one more day. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. Because God has been mighty good to me. And so therefore, check the Bible help us understand in regards to those, those Jews recognize that God will not hear a sinner's prayer. And then the Bible, when will God hear? When will God, 1 Peter 3, verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 12. When will God hear? When will God hear our prayer? So we've got to make sure we get ourselves in line with God. When will God hear you pray? The Bible says to us, go to read. If you have 1 Peter 3, 12. For the eyes of the Lord eyes of the Lord. Righteous. Are over the righteous. And his ears are and his open, ears to, are their open to their You see, no need to pray. The, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open to their prayers. Amen. Good read, sir, for the but, face of the Lord. But the face of the Lord is, is against them that do evil. You see, if you are not a part of the family of God, if you're not in Christ, the Bible tells us that the Bible said God's face, God's face is against you. Well, why is that going to come? Because you're not in a right relationship with him. You got to be in a right relationship with the Lord tonight. And hey, my friend, and so therefore, I'm gonna, let me just hurry up quickly. And hey, back in Ezekiel 37, where I left you, Ezekiel 37, and we'll read again verse number 3. He said, we need to prophesy. And hey, members of the church, that that's our job. Amen. Why he's turning there, Brother, Brother Perry, to John 15, 1. Go to John 15, we'll just hold, keep uh, Ezekiel 37, I'll be back. 
And the Bible says in John 15, 1, here are the members of the church, we got to be mindful that there's dead humanity everywhere. Yes. And every time, let me say this to you, every time, like this morning, I was on my way to the building this morning, and there was a and there was a funeral home, our cars, they liked so they passed me. As I pulled over, they, they passed me this morning on my way to the building, and I couldn't help but think about one thing. Every funeral you hear about, every time someone dies, you got to think about this. Either they die in their sin, or they died born again. Amen. Either they died outside of Christ, or they died inside of Christ. Yes. Every funeral. And let me just tell you something else. When you see some of the obituary, see those names, yes. and all the folk that's leaving here, mm -hmm. let me tell you something. I, I, I call I call a day. I had to reschedule an appointment. I had a doctor's appointment. I had to reschedule. And I called and I told um, the lady the receptionist I had to reschedule uh, my appointment for later on this month because I'll be going out of town most on Monday. And the young lady told me, she says, that's so sad to hear about your friend. She said, I just lost my best friend. So my best friend died. I mean, she said, I'll be going to a funeral, going to her funeral on Monday as well. And so he just, I mean, on Tuesday, I'm sorry, on Tuesday, uh, she'll be going to, the, going to the funeral. But I said, it's amazing. People are leaving here. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. Folk are dying. You realize that folk are dying every day. Yeah. There's not one day that goes by that somebody doesn't die. Right. Think about that. Right. And God allowed you to live yeah. to see this day. Yeah. Now, you are not living through some happenstance. You are living because God's been good to you. Yeah. When you hear about people dying, it's not the same folk dying. Sometimes we think it's the same people that you don't hear when Mr. Jones dies right again. No! When someone dies, new folk that's dying. New people are leaving here. And we got to be mindful of that. God has blessed us to see a day we have never seen before. Amen. And so church, that alone ought to make us grateful. Yes. Make up our minds say, you know what, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to have it now. Now this is our responsibility. We need to be revived. Because see, we can't be revived. We can't revive nobody else to revive ourselves. Amen. And we revive ourselves by doing what the Lord called us to do. Yes. Do you realize you've been saved yes. to save somebody else? Yes. Listen to me, church. God saved us, but God had purpose. Yes. When God saved you, somebody else, God had somebody else in mind. Yes. When I hear sister two nights ago when she was baptized, I entered the body of Christ. It's amazing that the Lord saw that day long before that day even occurred. That's yes. right. So when I was baptized, July 31st, 1977, when I was baptized, the Lord already looked for. And, and he saw, he saw this meeting. And he saw that wonderful sister. She he knew that she was going to be in this place at that time. So God, I don't have to put my goodness. Isaiah said, God sees, he sees the end before the beginning. So God is so awesome, he sees how things are going to end even before it starts. That's how awesome God is. So God saw this day. And in order for that day to come to fruition, God went to work in the past to bring the present into existence. That's how awesome God is that we say. God is an awesome God. All right, now, now I said we need to be busy. You've been called and the church needs to be revived. And we see because nothing brings more life to the church. Right. Nothing vibrates and, and gives life to a congregation and makes us uh, feel more alive and more as people bring us more together when we're bringing lost souls to Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm telling you, you want to you want to uh, revolutionize the thought process of a congregation? Start baptizing folks. Right. Listen to the Bible, John 15. I got to hurry. John 15, verse one. Go down. I'm the true vine. Jesus said, "Watch it now. I'm the vine, and my father is the husband. My father is the gardener. I'm the vine." Every branch in me that Jesus bears said, not fruit. Watch this now. Every branch that he's on my church for. Every branch in me that bears not fruit. That's not the He's going to take it away. And every branch that bears fruit. And every branch that bears fruit. He's going to prune it. That it may bring forth more fruit. You're going to see God allows us sometimes to go through things. To be able to relate to other people. So we can use that, uh, that experience that we had to help somebody else. And to bring them to Jesus Christ. Church, we got to learn to tell folk about what we've gone through. Yeah. You know the Apostle Paul? Paul could have brought every time you look around. Yeah. Paul kept saying, one day, yes, I was on the road to the best. Yeah. Paul said, I just can't forget what God did for me. Yeah. And everywhere I go, I'm going to tell the story. Yeah. We need to get to the point, brothers and sisters, where we need to tell the story how God saved us. I know we look look at us now. We look at Clorox clean and 
Look at nice. But there was a time when all of us, we were messed up. Living lives in sin. If it were not for God, all of us would be strung out. We'd be sitting for some of ball in our hand, kneeling in our arm. All of us would be messed up. But there was a birth God in our life. God has put us out. children of God. And the Bible said, watch the book, I heard it. Now that you are clean through the word. Now watch this now. You are clean. That's the word. Have to go back to that word. You are clean. Jesus knew the word. Which I have spoken unto you. Which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. See, Jesus said, you got to stay in me. And I in thee. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Because see, you can't do this by yourself. Except it abide in the body. Jesus said, the only way the church is going to do and fulfill the purpose that, that God has given for us, we got to stay in Jesus Christ. No way can he except he abide in me. Jesus said, we got to stay in him. I am the vine. Jesus, I am the vine. You are the branch. You all are branches. He that abideth in me. Abide in me. And I in you. I in you. The slave bringeth forth much fruit. You see what Jesus says? Now, Jesus told the truth. The, the reason for the period we're not baptized like we're supposed to, we need to check where we are. Amen. Maybe we're no longer connected to the vine. Amen. Because if you're connected to the vine, Jesus said you're bring for fruit. Yes. And the book says, don't worry, for without me, for without me, nothing. See what Jesus says? Jesus said, without me, you can't do anything. Go ahead and read the book, sir. If a man abide not in me, Jesus said, if a man is not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. He's cast forth as a branch. And is with it. And men gather them. And men gather them. And cast them into the fire. And, that's and the they are burned. That's the destination. If you're not looking up with Jesus Christ, the Bible says you're going to be gathered and thrown in the fire. If you right. abide in me. But if you stay in me. And my words abide in me. And my word of stay in me. You what you will. You can ask what you will. And it be done unto you. And the Bible says, watch this now. Ask what you will. You can pray. That's what he's us understand. If you stay in me, you can pray. Ask what you will. Jesus said, you can ask. In prayer, that's how we ask. All right, go and read. And it shall be done unto you. And it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified. Verse number 8 says, Herein, listen, church, herein is my Father glorified. That you bear much fruit. You got to bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. You can't, a uh, disciple is a follower. He said, You're not following me if you're not bearing fruit. Amen. And the reason you're not following me is because you're not connected to me. Right. We got to be connected to Jesus Christ. And so the church, that that's that's uh, my, our our task in regards to the church being revived. We need to learn to pray. Amen. We got to we got to learn to pray, and we got to understand, church, that Jesus said, "Look at the harvest. That's it. Look at the field. They're already white with harvest." Yes. He said, "Pray that the Father will send for laborers into the vineyard." And see, we got to go out, church. We got to go out. Humanity is lost. Every time you hear about troubles, man is lost. Every time you hear about uh, what's happening, uh, people taking each other's life, it's because their dead bones are everywhere. Dead bones are everywhere. And the book says that I try to conclude here uh, in Ezekiel 37. Watch what the Bible says. Go ahead and read. Verse. Yeah, verse 37, verse 3. We'll start back at verse 3. Well, you start, well, you start at verse 4. Right. Yeah. And he said unto me, He said unto me, Son of man, Son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord. And I answered, O oh Lord. Thou know. Lord, you know. Come on. And again he said unto me. And again he said unto me. Prophesy upon these bones. Speak the word to these bones. Come on. And say unto them. Say to these bones. O ye dry bones. O ye dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. That's what we ought to be saying to lost humanity. You ought to hear the word of God. Do what God's word told you to do. And the Bible said what? Thus said the Lord God unto these bones. Thus said, watch this now. Thus said the word to these dry bones. Behold, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. Watch this now. And ye shall live. God says to the dry bones, God says to dead humanity tonight. Yeah. If I speak the word, yeah. breath represents life. God says, I can give you life. If you accept the word tonight, I can give you life. And the book says what? And I will lay sinews upon you. I will lay sinews upon you. And will bring you up flesh upon you. He said, I will put flesh on the And cover you with skin. And I'm going to cover you up with skin. And put breath in you. I'm going to give life in that old dead body. And ye shall live. And God says, you're going to live. And ye shall know that and I God, am. And God. when I finish bringing you back from the dead. You don't know who I am. And the book says, come on, sir. So I promised as I was So I there, prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied. And he said, as I was talking, there was a day I heard a noise. And behold, a shaking. I heard a noise. And the back. bones came to And I heard a shaking. Bone to his bone. I said, boy, the moon is a good preaching boy right there. Started getting the 
together. And we would just preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus. 
And our hope is lost. Our hope is lost. We are cut off from our past. We can't get ourselves together. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them. And say unto them. Thus saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, behold my people. Yes. I will open your grave. What for God say? Cause you to come up out of your grave. Those who are dead. And bring you God into said, the land of Israel. I'll bring you from the dead. Amen. If you don't know me, you are dead in sin. But God says, I have a way to bring you from the grave. And God can give you life tonight. Only God. I said only God can do that. I thank God that I know for myself. Who is he? I'll tell you when he was eight. Mm, he's an antiseptic for my aches. B, he's a bomb for my bruises. C, he's a cure-all for my calamities. D, he delivers from my dilemmas. E, he erases every one of my errors. F, he forgives every one of my faults. He gives me G, grace for my grief. H, healing for my hurts. I, he identifies with my infirmity. J, he gives me joy over other folk jealousies. K, He came to live you up to the Father. Right. 
And so therefore, what a sad reality that's going to be. My friend, will you be standing there? Standing there. Because see, in the judgment, it'll be very simple. We were talking about that also tomorrow night. But, but the Lord, when he looks down, the reason you be baptized, because the Bible says, when we, we're baptized, we put on Christ. That's right. You see, baptism, we, we cover ourselves yes. with Jesus Christ. We, we, not only we have the spirit that dwells within us, but we cover ourselves with Jesus. And so when the Father looks down from the throne, yes. thank God he won't see us. Amen. But he will see the Son. Yes. Because we have been covered by the Son. Yes. And when he sees his Son, he's going to say, well done. This is my beloved Son, who I'm well pleased. He's pleased with the Son. And so when you and I need to make sure what we do, we have to get in the Son. And there's only one way to get in Christ. Galatians 3, and verse number 26, 27. The Bible says, For you all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into, into Christ have put on Christ. Because what, what happens there, what is this too much teaching, too much. Galatians 3, 24, you are all, watch this, present. You are all the children of God by faith in Christ that's present. He said, presently, that's where you are. Because of what you've done. Because verse 27, he says, For as many of you, for as many of you, as have been baptized by the Christ, he said, as has been past it. Verse 26 is where you are presently because of what you've done in the past. Verse 27. What did they do to become children of God? What did they do to become sons of God? You are all the children of God. How? Because they were baptized. That's it. Verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized, been baptized into Christ, into Christ. have put on Christ. See, you put on Christ. Amen. That means, listen, if you're not baptized, you have put on Christ. That's it. If you're not baptized, that means, we talked about this, that means you are in the world. You are an alien. Yeah. You are a stranger. Yeah. You have no hope. And without God, and you're in the world. That's a bad place to be. Amen. And so I'm saying to somebody tonight, you need to come on. The transportation we're going to use to, to get from earth to glory yeah. is going to be Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's going to be the one that we're going to depend upon to lead us yes. from where we are to where we need to go. Yes. Now, I know you may have some good transportation. You may think your, your transportation reliable, oh. but your transportation cannot prepare to the transportation that Jesus will provide. If I had time tonight, I'd tell y'all, it doesn't matter what transportation you have, nothing is more reliable than Jesus. I say it doesn't matter whether or not you have A, your Audi, mm, B, your BMW, C, your Cadillac, D, your Denali, E, it doesn't matter you have your Escape, F, your Ford, G, your Geo Metro, H, your Honda, I, your Infinity, J, your Jaguar, K, your Kia, L, your Lincoln, M, your Mercedes, E, your Nissan, O, your Aqua P, uh, your, your Prism, it doesn't matter. Q, your Watch, your R, your Rendezvous, S, your Saturn T, your Toyota, U, your Uplander, V, your Volvo, W, your Winnebago, X, your X Terra, Y, your Yukon, or Z, your Zephyr, or your Zoom Zoom, it does not matter. There is no transportation better than Jesus Christ. And I'm saying to you tonight, come on to the Lord today. Come on and say yes to him. He wants to revive you. Members of the body of Christ, if we have not been serious about our Christianity, sharing our faith with others, it's time for us to be revived. It's time for us to get busy about what God has called us to do. If you're not a member of the body of Christ, you should need to do number one, you hear the gospel. Hear how Jesus died for you. He was buried, rose again the third day. Having heard the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, you believe the gospel. The Bible says, Acts 15, verse number 7, there been much disputing. Peter rose up and said, Being brother, you know how God, good while ago, God made choice that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Then you repent of your sins. Acts 17, verse number 30, confess faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's what we find. Acts 8, verse 37. The eunuch says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then you need to be baptized in water for sin's remission. When you're baptized, my friend, what's going to happen? You're going to be moved from the class of the wicked. And now you're going to be numbered among the righteous. Those individuals are no longer going to be hopeless, but now you're going to have all the hope. Amen. Because the hope is in Jesus. 
those dead bones. Once you were, my friend, uh, you were devastated by death. You were, uh, you were devastated. You were defeated. But now in Jesus Christ, oh, yes. you're going to be alive. Amen. You're going to have the privilege of prayer. And God is going to be your father. Amen. And that's what the Lord is offering you tonight. That's the gift he wants to give you tonight. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be saved, my friend. And you can leave out of here tonight knowing you're a child of God. If you're a member of the body of Christ tonight, you're going to straight come back to the process of repentance, confession, and prayer. Or well, if you need prayer, Lord knows all of us need prayer. Amen. If you have a special request tonight, let it be known tonight. We never stand. We're going to sing a song. Come on to Jesus. Come on.